The 12-factor application methodology is a widely accepted paradigm and style for creating applications that are both agile to develop and suited for a high degree of scalability. In this presentation, you will see the 12 factors and get an explanation of what it means to follow each factor. Where appropriate, you'll see examples of how Bluemix helps you follow the 12-factor methodology in composing, deploying, and running an application. Here are the 12 factors. These recommendations came from observations of successful cloud-based deployments and best practices from development teams using agile processes and effective DevOps strategies. These factors span the range of how you manage code for the application, how you assemble application components, how to deal with different environments from build, test, and production, and techniques used to deal with management issues of cloud applications. Rather than read through all of them here, let's take a walk through factor by factor to understand each one better. Factor number one, code base. Now, of course, you'd have a code base and revision control, wouldn't you? The idea here is to have one code base tracked into vision control with multiple deployments. When we're looking at Bluemix Cloud Foundry applications, the application is the unit of deployment. Continuous delivery tool chains, also known as Bluemix DevOps, provides capabilities for you to easily implement this factor. A tool chain is a set of tool integrations that support development, deployment, and operational tasks. Tool integrations using a source code repository and delivery pipeline can drive multiple deployments from a single repository. Factor number two, dependencies. Explicitly declare and isolate your dependencies. Now this is the bane of many developers' existence. It's an example of the old, it works on my laptop, and when I go to production, it doesn't work scenario. In Bluemix Cloud Foundry, build packs can take care of assembling the dependencies for you. Here's an example. The cores package is specified for this node.js application in the package.json file. Whether running locally after an npm install or on Bluemix after the build pack assembles a droplet, there will be the same package and version available for the application. Factor number three, config. This is about storing the configuration in the environment. What you want to do here is store the configuration alongside the specific application deployment. Issues like where the particular database lives in tests versus production, and all those are changed as you go along, but they're tracked effectively through the config. So what are factors to put in the config? Resource handles to databases and other backing services, credentials to external sources, uh, per deploy values, like a host name for a particular deployment. Or in general, anything that's likely to vary between deployments, between dev, test, stage, and production. Now, where should you not put it? In the code, that's, that's pretty obvious. Um, in properties files, saved along with the code, not going to work either. Um, and shouldn't be in the build either. You want to have one build and then many deployments. The best place for configuration data is in the environment. Here's an example for a hypothetical Java Liberty Cloud Foundry application. In Bluemix, applications that are bound to services have access and credential information for the service stored at the environment level through VCAP services. An application reads info stored in VCAP services and then uses the service. The code remains the same, but the info in VCAP services would change between dev, test, or prop. This facilitates the statement, the code base could be made open source at any moment without compromising any credentials. Factor number four, backing services. This is about treating backing services as attached resources. They may be running on the same machine, they may be running on different machines, they may be running in third-party servers or some other cloud. You need to effectively treat these as attached resources that are easily and cleanly bound. Here's an example for your application. Push the application that needs an external data store, create the data store, bind the data store, and start the application. Now, if you're wondering about how to load any initial data into the data store, you're thinking along the right lines, and we'll get to that in a later factor. Factor number five, build, release, run. Here you want to strictly separate out the build and the run stages. Cloud Foundry creates all the components required to run the actual application on the Cloud Foundry platform and does this during application staging. Staging, or build process, creates an immutable container image. This diagram shows the general flow. There's code, 
which then gets converted into a build, and then the build is combined with config to create a release. Now we're looking at Cloud Foundry applications, the app code plus the Cloud Foundry build pack results in the creation of an immutable garden container image. Similarly, with Docker containers, the Docker build process creates a container image, which can then be stored in a private registry. That container image is used to create containers in the Bluemix container service. In all cases, the image is combined with a specific set of configuration data to make a release. Once a release is created, it's available to immediately run within a runtime environment. If you change the code in the runtime environment, you're going to be breaking this factor. Factor number six, processes. Think about this as designing stateless processes. We want to execute the app as one or more stateless processes. This is probably one of the most important things to keep in mind when you're trying to build a truly scalable, distributed, and cloud-ready application. Because there's no state within a particular process, if we lose a process, it doesn't matter because traffic is automatically and seamlessly routed to other processes in the environment that can handle the work. Here's an example. There are two application instances, each running in a different Diego cell. Say there are web applications that are tracking user sessions. All of the session data needs to be placed into a separate backing service. No user session data is cached or kept on the application instance. If one instance crashes, all of the remaining user traffic can go to the other instance without a disruption in service or experience for the users. Factor number seven, port binding. This factor says to explicitly export your services via port binding. This is an alternative as to depending on an external web service like Apache or Tomcat to handle incoming requests. A 12-factor app is completely self-contained and binds as a service to a network port. When running locally, the 12-factor application will bind to a workstation port and be accessed, for example, with HTTP, with the URL like http colon slash slash localhost 3000. On Bluemix Cloud Foundry, the application will bind to the port, and the Bluemix perimeter will route incoming traffic to the application instance or instances. As a result, an application that is developed and tested locally can work seamlessly on IBM Bluemix without any code changes. This concept isn't restricted to HTTP and web sockets. Most network services embrace the concept of binding to a port, even a non-standard port, and accepting requests with their respective protocols. Factor number eight, concurrency. This factor is about scaling out via the process model. A 12-factor app is designed to be composed of one or more stateless processes. When a process or instance reaches the resource capacity of the container, the application scales by adding another instance or horizontal scaling. The microservices architectural style takes this a step further by splitting up a monolithic application into components of different functions, allowing independent horizontal scaling of a particular component. Bluemix makes this kind of horizontal scaling natural, whether it's for a Cloud Foundry application or a container in the Bluemix container service. Traffic routing is automatically adjusted on scale out, adding instances, and scale in, reducing the number of instances when the load drops. Factor number nine, disposability. This factor is all about maximizing robustness with having fast start up and graceful shut down. In a nutshell, it means that processes should start almost instantaneously. When you shut them down, there should be no housekeeping or extra work that you have to do. They just go away. The meaning of graceful and quick shutdown can take a different approach to this depending on the component. For a web process receiving a SIG term, it should stop listening on the service port and then handle any outstanding requests before exiting. A worker process can take any incomplete work and return it to the queue. And again, the key point here is to maximize robustness with fast startup and graceful shutdown. Cloud Foundry can deploy and scale quickly, but can your app? Factor number 10, development and production parity. Keep your development, staging, and production as similar as possible. This is another step to avoid the works on my machine problem. This ties into agile software delivery, continuous integration, and continuous deployment type of concepts, but really it's about saying you don't want the development or production to get so far out of skew that one doesn't reflect the other. You want them to be identical, especially concerning dependencies and backing services. In Cloud Foundry, Bluemix Spaces provide separation within the same organization 
for an easy way to accomplish separation when hosting. They also provide a logical place to implement separation of duties, which is a very common application security requirement. As a side note, in cases where the same instance of a Bluemix catalog backing service is desired, for example, a trained Watson service, you can use user-provided services to propagate credentials between spaces. Factor 11, logs. Here you should treat your logs as event streams. Logging is very important. Without correct telemetry in your environment, you have no idea what is going on, and when complex or any other kind of issues come up, that can be hard to fix and understand. A 12-factor application doesn't worry about log files. Instead, it writes all events as an unbuffered stream to standard out. This allows the environment hosting the 12-factor application to collect and store events from all application instances in a scalable and consumable fashion. In Bluemix, this stream is picked up by the logregator. For analysis, Bluemix provides LogNet based on an ELK stack for short-term log analysis needs. For longer term, you can configure a Cloud Foundry application to send logs to a third-party service provider through a user-provided service entry. Factor number 12, admin processes. You should run your administrative or management tasks as one-off processes. For example, loading data into a backing service that's just been created. You don't want to create admin processes that may need to be repeated many times that aren't well encapsulated as code themselves. It's very important to create a separate process, even if it's a one-off, to do a particular task. In Bluemix, you can create these admin processes separately and then have them access the same credentials by binding them to the same services that the application is bound to. And that covers our overview of the 12-factor app methodology. Thanks for listening.